All right, time for finally C2 activation on my Furina. As you have known the other day, I managed to pull for C2 Furina at an insanely emotional damage cost. If you haven't already watched my Furina pulls, guys, you can absolutely check out this video right after this. But guys, the whole point of today's video is going to be having some fun playing around with C2 Furina, showcasing you guys her power level at C2 and basically whether or not it's actually worth it after trying so hard getting her c2 and so with that let us just dive right in so it did take me a while to farm for my Farina because yes her material are within the new expansion of Fontaine and also it did take a while for my artifacts as well but gladly I did manage to get some decent stats on my artifacts so currently we're sitting at around 55 crit rate with 257 crit damage and 133 energy recharge which i say is pretty good because this amount would generally be enough if you're running in a double hydro team a little bit on the lower side if you're trying to run her solo but most of the time i do kind of recommend you to try and have her in double hydro team because it's really important for her burst uptime now weapon wise throughout the video i will be using her signature to showcase and yes her signature looks absolutely beautiful as well so yes it's definitely one of my favorite looking swords so far in genshin but my artifact substats i would say that i got a little bit lucky in terms of how the start went because most of the pieces did have crit rate and crit damage to it and yeah the majority of the roll did go into crit rate and crit damage too with a little bit of energy recharge so i would say that isn't too bad in terms of how the artifacts actually went i'm also using crit damage circlet which is probably why you're seeing my crit damage is decently high because the good thing about farina is that she does have crit rate ascension and most of my artifact pieces has crit rate too so that kind of covers up the main stats of crit rate and all that's left for me is to pump everything into crit damage now the talent level is basically at level 7 in this showcase because this is the very first week of the new expansion and Farina released with the world boss so i can only manage to farm it once and definitely will have to wait for the week to come in order for me to crown my Farina. but the most important thing in today's video is regarding the constellations which will be activating basically right now so what does her c1 actually do is that she gives up right a 150 fanfare for you upon casting her burst as well as increasing her limits by a hundred other words you're getting around 400 fanfare maximum which is basically a maximum of a hundred percent damage increase for your team and what does her c2 does is that it increases how fast for is able to get fanfare from your nearby party members by 250% or basically you're able to max out your fanfare points for Farina a lot faster and whenever it actually overflows outside the limit number of fanfare that she can that will be converted into Farina's max HP by 0.35% with a maximum of 140% to put it simply that's gonna be an extra 400 fanfare that is converted into to her maximum HP. So yes, increasing the maximum HP that Farina has means that she's able to do a lot more E skill damage for you, while your team is able to get a 100% damage increase a lot faster than when you're at either C1 or C0. So on paper, C2 is able to activate Farina's maximum limit in terms of her power a lot faster for you. And then definitely the rest of the constellation for either quality of life and enhancing that limit even further. As so to demonstrate to you the difference between C0 and C2, I'll be having a little bit of a comparison between how her teams perform when she was at C0 versus when she at C2. And I'll be using, you know, two different team here with two different comparison so that you have a little bit more in depth into how she performs. First team will be a variation of my coaching team and the second team would be regarding Hutao team. Battle. 
All right, so as you can see, there weren't too much of a difference between C0 and C2 clear time. Now, the main reason would be being is that with both constellation, it still take time for you to get up to maximum fanfare stacks. Even with C2, it will still take a bit of time. Therefore, in shorter and easier fights, where you can actually take out your enemies real quick, it won't make too much of a difference. And the biggest one here would be that of your starting 150 fanfare fair point that Furina gets for your team. Moving on, let's have a look at the comparison between team 2. Now you're starting to see quite a bigger difference because the fight is now getting longer and Furina would require to use up all of her bursting time therefore you're making the most out of your fanfare point buff plus she's able to get overflow fanfare point boosting her E skill even further as well. So as you can see the longer the fights the more beneficial her constellation would become especially in places like the abyss and speaking of the abyss in mind let's have a quick showcase of full power Furina at C2 speeding through the abyss with my team and I'll be using Mono Hydro team to go through in this video.
And so basically that was around under three minutes for all of the half that Furina team was responsible for, which is actually some of the fastest time in all the team I have currently. Also keep in mind is that Furina talent level is currently level seven. To put that into perspective, guys, at maximum fanfare point, she's getting around 76% damage buff for the whole team, or in other words, that is roughly around the same level as C0 maximum buff at talent level 10. Though yes, Furina does have the overflowing fanfare point, so her E skill would be doing higher damage than at C0. Therefore, imagine what C2 Furina would be able to do when she is crowned at talent level 10, which is a 100% damage bonus for your whole team, or in other words, that's a 25% more increase to your whole team damage, for which I am so excited to see whenever I get to crown my Furina. Again, throughout the showcase, if you do want to note is that Furina is definitely a character that works really well when you're having at least two or more Hydro characters for her because she's not a character that's really good at Hydro application, especially in group situation, guys, like, you know, the first chamber where there's a whole pack of wolf. If you have Furina solo in hydro you're most likely not gonna have hydro application on the targeted wolf you are targeting so yes triggering any hydro related reaction with furina when she's solo is rather hard and also that's gonna be a lot more mindfulness toward your energy recharge level towards her as well because most of the time she is off field and if you are soloing her she will require a lot more energy recharge than she does now in my showcase and so with everything that we've seen in this video now the biggest question of all is that what's C2 Furina worth it for me to get and I would say that for Furina diehard fan out there like me hell yes it was worth the pool and her weapons because everything looks real good and her constellation just helped your team out so so much but guys for free to play as well as casual player I would say it's kind of a no it's too much of an investment trying to get this many constellation unless you're really lucky guys you'll be like me in this video seriously guys if you haven't watched this video be sure to check out right after because it's really fun and i would definitely just rather go for her c0 and her weapon and i would be all set to go because that's a very very good furina already so guys i hope that the video have been very fun for you and you got a lot of information out of it if you do have any questions just leave it down in the comment section or if you're someone who also have furina c2 leave it down there as well and discuss so that everyone can have your insights as well now if you've just finished building your furina and you're looking out for some of the best team that she can run in then i have a very dedicated video going through some of the best team that furina can be featuring in so be sure to check out the video right now as i'm sure it will be very very helpful for you if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe as i post a lot of fun interesting video like this and i'm sure it will be very worth it for you i really appreciate you guys sticking with me till this part of the video guys and with that i wish you a super day and i will catch you on my next video